I am, like you, bullish into that 5750 JP Morgan sold call for September 30th. I don't know anybody who isn't who follows options, right? So it's really yeah. pretty much a consensus trade. But as I, as I have also written in my market thoughts, be careful then, because the first few weeks of October have traditionally introduced volatility. Agreed. We've got, yeah. Right? We've got seasonality at play. We have Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, which has traditionally yeah. been a saying, folklore that has some statistical relevance, buy, uh, sell Rosh Hashanah and buy Yom Kippur, which is the second through the 12th kind of framework. And then we also have corporate buybacks, which are in blackout until October 25th. And then they come in with a flurry for Q4. And corporate buybacks are the largest buyer of equities in the market, period. So they matter. The point is, they came in and policy interference always works <laughs> until it doesn't. Yeah. So we've got a situation where it is clear whether it be the 50 basis point rate, uh, rate cuts last Wednesday or the August 5th reflexive bounce, et cetera, et cetera, and, and volatility crush, it is very much a supported market. So even though I'm on the lookout for the things that can absolutely trigger bank weakness, again, unemployment related, et cetera, there's still a, a flow of bullishness. You got to admit IWM, which I know you haven't really loved, is really not acting like uh, rates are going to drop 200 basis points, which should be fantastic for a lot of the economy. So something is something's amiss to some extent. And I fear that what that's going to do is if things do get a little muddied again, they're going to run to this, the balance sheet heroes. Bonds, XLP, XLV, XLU recommended since May. And, back and now pullback. Yeah. Yeah. So for clients, if they're long into a theme, how do you suggest they protect in a, in a in a pullback? I think once you once you sense that 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 correction is underway, right? We don't know. Unfortunately, we don't know until it begins and then it starts to confirm you that confirmation. And then I think it can get as simple as be, basically put on putting on a collar. I mean, I think you can sort of get in there, sell TLT uh, calls at the 100, 102 level. It depends what you're looking at. Like if I look at yeah, 101, 102, I've been doing collars on 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 a, a bunch of different things so far i'm going out to december just sort of but, but i'm picking what a lot of people do with the callers is they look for a costless caller and i don't think that's necessarily the way to go i think especially if you're up money on some of these things that you're talking about i think you can sacrifice just a little bit of that so you could sell an out of the money call for two bucks and pick up a put for four dollars your net outlay is going to be two bucks so you're going to sacrifice some of that uh, gain that you have so far, but you're going to be able to be more aggressive on the put side. You're going to get a much more effective strike because part of the problem with callers sometimes is that put strike is pretty far away. So you have that pretty heavy deductible where the thing can come down a fair bit. Uh, one of the trades I really like is a risk reversal. So this is one of my favorites is when you feel like a stock has really had a good run, you don't really want to buy it here, but you still want to participate in the upside. What you could do is sell like a 110 put, which is way out of the money at this point. Uh, and you could use that to finance an upside call spread of some kind. So you could buy like a seven. Oh, that's a financed call spread. Yeah, finance call spread, exactly. Okay, so for me, a risk reversal is, you know, you sell a put and buy a call, you're doubly bullish. I love financed call spreads and put spreads. Like the yeah. JP Morgan is a finance put spread. I love those. Those are my favorite option tactic. It does require margin, you know, and management. I don't actually really think that it's it's for everybody, but right. yeah, it's, I'm crazy about those. It's definitely it's definitely something that um now you can cut down on that margin if you sell the put spread instead of just selling a put, then at least mm -hmm. you're limited to the width of the spread. So that's one, but you're gonna get so much less premium for that put spread. Yeah. But one of yeah. the things I like to do is and so for example, sometimes in something like spy and by the way i like to do a finance call spread for scratch i'm one of those oh <laughs> uh, okay okay that's all right so that's I, nice to... I i like to find one that is like 25 cents that's perfect debit and it's of course because i'm convicted of a particular direction but i also know that it needs to be defended because it can very quickly fall ill if it, it if it could. doesn't have enough time and, and the right well, the one right of the things strikes. 
one of the the things that that I encourage people to look at a little bit. Now, this is getting it's sort of a next level of option trading, but it is important too. And you look at things like SKU. So SKU, this is the SPY SKU, the SPX SKU for that matter. And so you can see that those out of the money puts are very expensive. This is the this is the level of option pricing versus the out of the money calls. So that's where your financed upside gets very very interesting when you get this pronounced SKU. You can sell an out of the money put on the SPY and finance an upside structure, like just a call or a call spread. And that can get very, very cheap because oftentimes they're already compressing that upside. Why? Because people like me who used to run all these covered call funds come in and they go, well, I've got 10,000 calls to sell today. And guess what the market makers say? They go, oh, really? I'm going to give you a really great price for those. And they lower their bid and 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 they give me an awful price. So, so the upside often gets compressed. Join Hans Options education course by scanning this QR code or by clicking on the link in the description. Watch the full options macro to micro power hour episode by clicking on the video here and subscribe to Let Duke Trading YouTube channel for more content.